covered pole rigs before and obviously the time of year now, May time, during the crow season that normally would be feeder fishing. Lots of venues locally here, Ferry Meadows, Roswell Pits, one of my favourite venues that I do go to. And then obviously back end sort of September time when possibly the festivals in Ireland and, and even with a bit of feeder fishing on the drain. So we're going to cover feeders and hooks that I use. So this is my feeder box. I mean, some might say it's a bit over the top, but I do lots of different styles of feeder fishing. You know, I run a feeder pairs league on the middle level where we'd use slightly different feeders to when we're going to Ireland. So I'll start with the first box. And um, these diver boxes are really good because they've got a little clip either side that stay extra strong. So this box here is what I would class as like my river feeder box. So I've got some Old Faithful Nissa big pigs you know, up to sort of four ounce jobbies if you're fishing the Trent or the Yare. So um, I'll talk you through these. Obviously the Nissa feeders have been around a long time. That's a three ounce Nissa there. Brilliant for when you're putting chop worm through the feeder, chopping your worms up in a separate bowl, squishing it through and then capping the ends up with ground bait. Brilliant for that, or just a standard ground bait feeder. Um, all of the Nissa feeders all interchange. I mean, that one there is 44 gram and ice little one there. So moving on from say the year, I do tend to do a lot of fishing on the Bure and the Thurn on the Norfolk Broads. And the fishing there is either roach fishing normally on the pole or a bit of flat float fishing for skimmers. But early part of the season, sort of June, July, it's all feeder fishing. And you're not chucking a million miles, you're just using a nice sort of 11 foot ends on medium feeder, sort of a 60 gram feeder. And what you're doing is you're using small feeders, but slightly heavy. So these are what I tend to use here. I've adapted that one there, but the small nisses are very good, especially for the Bure, they're a little bit heavier. That's an ounce and a half. Then I've got these here, which are the Cresta Jail Feeders. So they're, they're like, um, they're blocked off at one end and they're brilliant for just putting worms in a tiny bit of ground bait when, when the fish and skimmers are definitely having it. So that's a Cresta Jail Feeder. Then these are the Preston wire cage feeders and they're they're really good you can small parcel of bait normally we're using fish meal ground bait on there so a bit of like green bream maybe a little bit of lean but green bream works really well on there just squidging it in a little bit of worm short chuck everything's nice and tight and direct i even take the clip off that and just have it so it's nice it's straight onto the onto your rig um so going through there, I've got a few other ones I've added a bit extra weight, you know, it's like you always tailor made. But the jail feeders are very good. I mean, that's very small, that's 35 grams, so that's perfect for that. Um, so yeah, they're them, that's that fe particular feeder box. So move that out of the way. Right, the next one is um, my basket feeder box. So these are your typical basket feeders. So they're weight forward type thing. I tend to use these on the middle level. Um, you can use them just normal standard feeder fishing, but I use these on the level where I'm trying to make a bit of a cloud in my peg. Because with this particular one, you can't really compress the ground bait, so it compacts it so it goes in. These are good with a soft ground bait when you're chucking and just as it hits the water, the cloud's coming out of your feeder. So they're the basket feeders. That's um one I use in Ireland more, they're a bit heavier. You can compact them more because you can get your fingers round, compress them there, and they go out like a rocket. The other weight forward feeder I use is the ends on ones. Now these are lovely when you want to introduce a small amount of bait into your peg. You could use these on the Bure and the Thurn where you're just chucking short. Again, perfect feeder for that. Nice bit of power gum on them. Been really impressed with the ends on range of feeders that have come out this year. So that particular feeder on the middle level, I'd probably start with something like that just to get a few particles into your peg, a bit of cloud. And, and then I'd either go to a normal feeder or I'll go to a window feeder, which we'll come on to in a bit. Um, I've adapted some of these, cut some holes out so the ground bit comes out a bit quicker. Good thing about these Browning Exynos feeders is the leads screw off. So I can put a real heavy lead on a small feeder, which sometimes in the wind is critical. You can keep it nice and tight and accurate. So they're my um, basket feeders. So move them out of the way. 
Um, in here, we've got some more basket feeders, some slightly heavier ones that I was telling you about, the Preston ones, or bullet feeders they're called. Um, so again, another box full of your standard cages, the traditional way of doing it. I've got some leads there for clipping up. Um, what I will say is I do use a heavier lead for clipping up. Um, just works better because there's no good using a light Isley bomb, especially if you were chucking to a feature, for example. If you're chucking out with a little Isley bomb, then you get a nice heavy feeder and it just, it just goes past where you're fishing. So clip up with a nice heavy lead to start off with. Right, these ones here are the little Guru ones. Again, they're nice when you're just fishing, say a short chucking island where you're putting a little bit of bait in, fishing a maggot on the hook, just catching roach quite regularly. They empty every time and they cast dead straight, which is, you know, when you're fishing fast, you need things to go in with a nice little plop and you're fishing straight away. So the next box is probably the most talked about feeder now um, and it's window feeder. So over the last probably 10 years, I would say, the window feeders have evolved. Um, I think I've got some original ones here. Yeah, no, that's not, that's a Guru one. Have we got any more in there? No, Bob Ludd invented the original window feeder with browning and the, the window literally slid round and, and, and blocked up. But over the years, obviously more manufacturers have got on board and they've improved it like anything. Um, so the next feeder that come after the browning window feeder was the Dennis feeder. And to be honest, I still like the Dennis feeder now. I know people get put off by the colour, but... I just like the fact how hollow they are inside and when you're fishing a window feeder you probably would start with like i said earlier a, a standard cage feeder or a basket feeder these are brilliant when you want to introduce particles and sort of home the bait that home the fish into where you're fishing and they cast through any winds to be honest um, i mean preston do these heavier ones now I'd use that quite a few times in Ireland this year in the world pairs. That's a 75 gram feeder. So you need the right rod to chuck it. But in the weather we had out there this year, just gone, that was essential to just cast, cut straight through the wind and go exactly and hit your clip every time. Um, so they're the Dennis ones. Obviously these are the bait up version. Um, so you can get a lot of bait in that. I mean, places like Roswell pits where you put in lots of worms and a few casters and chop corn in they're mega at the start you know you'd only probably have to put 10 of them in but you're nice and accurate it goes out straight um they're not called idiot feeders for no reason even i can chuck them straight um so those are the dennett ones then you've got the preston they do obviously a cage version again that's a 60 gram and the the actual base is sloped away so the idea of that is when you retrieve the bait just comes straight out of your feeder right over your hook length one key thing with fishing a window feeder, keep twitching your line and, and checking your bait because you, basically how it sits is it literally sits up like that on the bottom. So if you imagine you twitching it, this the bait's going to be coming out and just introducing a few fish. So just dragging it along the bottom, your hook bait comes where your feed was. Next thing you know, tip's gone round and you've got a fish on. Um, so that's those. Obviously the Guru do one as well. They're nice and streamlined. Uh, the good thing about the Guru ones is the weight's all interchange, so I can just unscrew, clip on the same feeder, and, and away you go. Um, got some smaller weights there, loads of different Guru weights there, look, just so you can customise it. Uh, I've also got some bait up feeders, like that, the Guru ones. They're good when you're chucking probably up to about 40 metres, anything past that, they, they tend not to be quite as accurate as you want it to be. Um, but they're brilliant for starting your peg at the start if you're putting a big table's worth of bait in. Um, the other feeders we'll talk about are what Matrix have done. They don't actually do a window feeder, but they've done a bell feeder. Um, they just offer a slightly different bit of presentation. And with feeder fishing, just changing a different size feeder or um, just a simple thing like that can produce a few more bites. So they're my window feeders. I mean, these are brilliant for short chuck, especially in wind, hardly any baiting going into your peg, but they're fantastic. So feeders do different jobs, and that's why I have tons in the shop and tons in my, in my, uh, in my box here.